Okay, so we're continuing to look at linear independence. So we had just done this example, and now we've got the zero. Consider a set S of two or more vectors, and the following two statements are equivalent. S is linearly dependent. At least one vector in S can be expressed as a linear combination of the others. Okay, so this is the this is the thing that. I personally think should be the definition, is a better definition of linear dependence. If you can express one vector, at least one vector in S, as a linear combination of the others, then we say the set is linearly dependent. And the reasoning is the same as I gave above, that if it's linear dependent, you can have this linear combination that equals zero, and then since one of the scalars, let's call it, suppose it's AK, is not zero, you can take that to the other side, divide through by that scalar, and now you have VK as a linear combination of the other vectors. Okay. So that's all. That's all done. Okay. So now example. Another example. Is the set x squared x1 linearly dependent or independent? Okay. So we're looking for alpha, beta, and gamma so that alpha x squared plus beta x plus gamma equals zero. Okay. Now, since x squared and x one are here, we're thinking of, them, thinking of them as functions, right? Polynomials, actually. This this equation must be true for any value of x. So we can try we can try different values of x. You can sub in x equals one, that gives you that. You can sub in x equals zero, it gives you that. You can sub in x equals minus one, that gives you that. Then now we have a system of three equations and three unknowns and. We can find that it only has one solution when alpha equals beta equals gamma equals zero. Let's just check that. How do you solve a system of three equations and three unknowns? Well, it's a linear system, isn't it? So you should definitely set up a matrix and do some reduction. So the matrix that represents this system, try and write it down. OK, so it could be 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, minus 1, 1, right? OK. Then we could go, we want to reduce this. So we could go, we could start with row 3 minus row 1. In fact, let's rather start with row 1 minus row 3 and row, sorry, I meant, yes, yes, row 1, row 1, to, row 1 minus row 3. Sorry, I mean row 1 minus row 2, and also row 3 minus row 2. Okay, so that's going to give us 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1 minus 1, 1. Oh, sorry, 0. Okay, times alpha, beta, gamma equals the 0 matrix. Now we could go row 2. Could, we, could, we could oh sorry we could go row three plus row one that's going to give us one oh it's going to give us two zero zero alpha beta gamma equals the zero matrix zero zero one here one one zero there now we could go we could divide row three by two we could also go row one minus row 3 over 2, and then we're going to have 0, 1, 0 at the top, and then 0, 0, 1, and then 1, 0, 0. Now, of course, you can now swap rows to get the identity matrix, showing that the only solution is alpha, beta, and gamma, all, all equal to 0. OK. I have another example. Is the set x squared plus x minus 1, 2x squared plus 3x plus 1, x squared minus 4, is that linearly dependent or independent? Okay, well, we can... Hmm. Now, it's a solution says we can exploit the linear independence of x squared, x, and 1 that we've just shown to solve this problem. So I'm not sure what they're going to do, but let's see. So we start with, okay, of course, we've got the line, setting a linear combination, the linear combination of these things, setting, setting an equal to 0. Then we can group into powers of x. Okay, now since 
x squared, x, and well, there would be a 1 there, are independent. This, in this equation, the only solution is that equals 0, that equals 0, and that equals 0. So that's, three, that's now, that's again, three equations and three unknowns, which you can represent, which you then can solve with reduction. Okay, so we can, we need to write down a matrix that represents that system. So that first equation, so it's going to be something times alpha, beta, gamma equals the zero matrix. Now that first equation says, this first thing, this needs to be zero, so alpha plus two beta plus gamma equals zero. So that would be one, two, one. Then we have alpha plus three beta, one, three, zero. Then we have minus alpha plus beta minus four. Okay, so that should be the matrix. Is that the same as what they have? One, one minus one, two, three, one, one, zero minus four, yes. Okay, so we need to Gauss reduce this. Okay, so let me do that quickly. So I could go, I could go, I could go row, th I could go row three, I could go row three plus row one, and that will become zero, three, minus three, right? Yeah, zero, three, minus three. I could also go row two minus row one, and then I'll have zero, one, minus one. Okay, then I could use that new row two. I could subtract two times that from row one, and then I'd have, I'd have one, zero, and then one minus minus two, so that's one plus two, so I have three there. I could m subtract three times the second row from the third row, and I'd have a row of zeros there. Okay, and that's as much as can be done. Is that what, do they, did they get it, the same thing? One, zero, three, yes, okay. We, we, we uh, this was correct. Um, so, now this says that the solutions, this says that there's going to be non-zero solutions, so these things are going to be independent, right? I mean, de dependent, okay? Since there's a free variable, we immediately know there are infinite number of solutions, so these functions form a linearly dependent set. To make this more concrete, okay, it's the same kind of thing we did, that gamma equals t, since it's a free variable, then we know that alpha must equal minus 3t, and beta must equal t, reading that off from, reading that off from, the equation, right? Letting t equals 1, for instance, gives us this linear combination equals that, right? So let me just do that myself, go through that myself. So this reading off, we let, we let for example, if so we let gamma equal 1, right? Then it says that beta equals gamma, so it equals 1, and it says that alpha equals minus 3, times gamma, so minus 3 times 1. Okay, minus 3, is that what they put as well? Minus 3, 1, 1, yes. Now let's check that that works out. So, now I'm looking at this thing here, I'm subbing in those values that I worked out. Minus 3 times x squared plus x minus 1, plus 1 times 2x squared plus 3x plus 1, plus... 1 times x squared minus 4, okay? So what does that, what does that come to? Okay, we, so we have, we have minus 3x squared plus 2x squared plus x squared, so that's 0x squared. We have minus 3x plus 3x, and no x is there, so that's 0x. And then we have plus 3, plus 3, plus 1, minus 4, which is 0 as well. So that thing is zero, as we expected, as we, as we uh, worked out. So we have this linear combination is with non-zero coefficients, but gives you zero. So that set, so this set is linearly dependent, right? Okay. Um, you know, actually, it occurs to me that you could also do this question in a more direct way if you wanted. 
so how did we do this question here? How do we find the independence or dependence of this set? Well, we just subbed in different values and got some equations. You could also do that for here. You could sub in values. So, for example, so this thing must be true for all x. So you could go like this. You could say, we could try, um, you could try subbing in, a good thing to sub in would be to sub in the zeros of these polynomials. So, for example, one of the zeros of those polynomials is when x equals 2, right? And that last polynomial is 0. Ah, no, that's going to be much more of a hassle. Okay, I think, our method, I think the method here was much better. Okay, and that's the end of this section.